Hi dear students welcome to our next class today we are going to learn about the basics of web applications in this chapter we are having a lot of learning objectives the learning objectives are how to use the accessibility options on your computer then describing the networking fundamentals use instant messaging and chat using Google Talk, use Gmail and Yahoo Messenger, creating and publishing the blogs, how to create offline blogs, how to do online transactions and describing the internet security concept. Okay, let me go through each and every portions in detail. First of all, how to work with the accessibility options in a computer. Accessibility means providing services for people with disabilities so that they can perform or complete their work without facing problems. Similarly, computer accessibility refers to customizing the functioning of the computer parts. There are various types of impairment or disabilities that affect computer usage. Such disabilities are eyesight like low vision or color blindness, hearing like deafness, or paralysis of any body parts like arms, hands or fingers injured, speech impairment, and reasoning like learning disability or difficulty to concentrate. For launching this accessibility option, you have to click on the start button, then go to the control panel and then click on ease of access option in the control panel. Now you are clicking on the ease of access option, you will be navigated to next window that is ease of access center. In ease of access center, you have to click on let windows suggest the settings. In this option, you will be provided an easy way to change the setting of mouse, keyboard, contrast, etc. according to your disability. When you click this option, you can choose the type of environment and their respective alternatives provided by Windows 7. This automatically shows the various accessibility features to customize them. After customizing it, you have to click on the next button. You will be navigated to this window and in this window, you, you are able to see mainly four options that is start magnifier, start narrator, start on screen keyboard and set up high contrast. Start magnifier option opens up a magnifier which allows you to see large phones. The start narrator options opens up a Microsoft narrator which will read aloud what is on screen. The start on screen keyboard opens up an on screen keyboard and setup high contrast option opens a window showing setting for color and contrast of display. As we roll down on this page, we can see an option make the computer easier to see. If we are clicking on this option, you will be navigated to this window and in this window there are a lot of options like you are able to set the high contrast cursor option and so on. On that page, there is another option that is make the mouse easier to use. You just click on that uh, option. You will be navigated to this window and in this window you are able to uh, change the mouse options. On the same page itself, there is another option that is make the keyboard easier to use. Whenever you are clicking on this link, you will be navigated to this window and in this window, lot of options like sticky key, toggle key, etc. are there. You are able to set the sticky key, toggle key and so on. What do you mean by a sticky key? A sticky key allows the user to press and release a modifier key like shift, control, alt or windows key and make it active until any other keys is pressed and toggle keys the toggle keys are designed for people who is having vision impairment 
you will hear a tone when you press the key with the caps lock num lock or scroll lock on the same window you are having another option that is use text or visual alternatives for sounds if you are clicking on this link you will be navigated to this window and in this window you are allowed to set up alternatives for sounds like you can set sound entry etc so what is sound entry sound entry is designed to help users with auditory environments it generates visual warning such as blinking title bar whenever computer generates a sound is always some of the accessibility options which we are using on a computer our next topic is networking fundamentals what do you mean by networking interconnection of everything is known as networking and here we are going to learn about computer networking what do you mean by computer networking interconnection of computers are termed as computer networking and lot of advantages are there for computer networking we will discuss about the advantages of computer networking some of the advantages associated with the networking are as follows the first one is user communication is network allows users to communicate using emails social networking sites video conferencing etc second one is file sharing by using networking data or information can be shared or transferred from one computer to another third one is media and entertainment most of the companies and tv channels use network to broadcast audio and video including live radio and television programs fourth one is hardware sharing hardware components such as printers scanners can also be shared for example instead of purchasing 10 printers one printer can be purchased and shared among multiple users by thus we can save the cost and fifth one is software sharing users can share software over the network very easily therefore large companies can reduce the cost of buying software by networking their computers these all were some of the advantages of networking next topic is switching technique switching is a technique which is used in large networks it's a hardware or software device which creates a connection between one or more computers switching is basically of three types that is circuit switching message switching and packet switching let me discuss each about in detail first one circuit switching in this type of technique and end to end path is created before sending the data the data is transferred using physical connection which is set up between a sender and the receiver second one is message switching in message switching is based on the transfer of block of messages from sender to receiver firstly the address of destination is attached in a message when a sender has a block of data to be sent it is stored in the first switching station and then forwarded later each block of message is received entirely checked for errors and then retransmitted there is no need for any physical connection between the source and destination in this kind of switching and the third one is packet switching in this type of switching a message is broken into packets of fixed size each packet has header that contains source and destination addresses information acknowledgement and error bits mostly networks use packet switching rather than circuit and message switching next we are going to discuss about various networking devices lot of networking devices are used in this field some of the networking devices are switch hub router bridge and repeater let's discuss each of them in detail first we are going to discuss about the hub 
a hub is a central device in a network that provides common connection among the computers or nodes it is used in star topology another networking device is switch a switch is a device which connects multiple communication lines together it is used to create temporary connections between two or more devices linked to a switch a switch is otherwise known as an intelligent hub another networking device is a router a router is attached to one or more networks to forward packets from one network to another another networking device is bridge a bridge is a networking device responsible for filtering the data it checks the destination address of a packet and decides whether it should be forwarded or dropped it connects to lan networks another networking device is a repeater a repeater is a device which connects two segments of a lan also used for boosting a network signal these all were some of the commonly used networking devices in the field of computer networks now we are moving to the next topic that is types of network mainly there are four types of network commonly used in computer networking field they are pan that is personal area network lan a local area network wan wide area network and man metropolitan area network now let's discuss every one in detail first one personal area network the type of network in which we are using in our house is known as personal area network normally we are connecting lot of our electronic gadgets to this network that is known as personal area network and second one is lan that is local area network the type of connection that is interconnection of computers inside a small office or school or a small business uh, venture is known as local area network and third one is that is metropolitan area network that is interconnection of computers around the city that which covers a city is known as metropolitan area network and fourth one is wide area network that is the interconnection of computers which covers all over the world internet is a typical example for wide area network our next topic is instant messaging what is instant messaging instant messaging is a form of communication over the internet that offers an instantaneous transmission of text based messages from sender to receiver to use instant messaging software a user must have a valid messaging account some of the key features of an instant messaging software are one sending text messages to more than one person at same time two audio and video calling Three audio and video conferencing. Four messages history for future references, and five transferring of files. For instant messaging, we are having different softwares. Mainly, they are classified into two: that is, application based and web based. First one, application based. Application based instant messaging software is downloaded and installed on the user's computer. Google Hangouts, Skype, Yahoo Messenger, Windows Live Messenger are some of the application based instant messaging softwares. Next one is web based instant messaging software. Web based instant messaging software is accessed using web browsers such as Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, etc. Maybe Bo Messenger MSN web messenger and IMO messengers are some of the web based internet uh, in instant messaging softwares we should follow some general rules and etiquettes while chatting first one is use short messages that is message it should be short and to the point second one is do not use all caps Typing your message in upper case is like shouting on the internet and very aggressive. 
and third point is give people time to respond that is be polite while online if you are chatting with your friend do not ask multiple questions in a short time so that the recipient has to time to respond fourth one is respect others while chatting that is give the person you are communicating with your undivided attention and fifth one is properly ending a conversation that is it is very necessary to end a conversation while chatting these all were some of the general rules what we have to follow while chat our next topic is blog we all are familiar with this term blog a blog is nothing but it is an online diary we can add text photos audios and videos in blog the person who creates a blog is called a blogger and the activity of maintaining a blog is called blogging you can also leave a comment on others blog the term blog was derived from web blog by john barger in 1997 and some of the popular websites that offers free blog services are www.wordpress.com www.blogger.com www.blog.com www.blogsum.com these all were some of the online blogging services for blogging we need an email address and we have to create a username password and then we will provided with a blog address in this way we are able to create a blog id in any of these blogging sites and some of the free offline blog editors are chumana blog desk windows live writer and so and so the blog editors can be downloaded and installed on the computer for example chumana can be downloaded from www.chumana.com and we are able to use this blog editor offline blog editor in our system our next topic is online transactions e-commerce we all are familiar with e-commerce e-commerce is a major application of internet users can buy or sell goods over the internet by paying online using a credit card or a debit card some of the popular online transaction websites are irctc it's an online portal for booking and cancellation of train tickets flipkart an online shopping portal for buying products ebay an online shopping portal for buying and selling goods redbus an online portal for booking bus tickets these all were some of the major online transaction sites what we are seeing in nowadays e shopping is a form of electronic commerce that allows customers to directly buy goods or services from a seller on the internet and e ticketing is a facility to buy or cancel tickets of trains and flight while we are using this internet internet security is one of a major concern nowadays it involves network security and browser security here we are going to discuss about some of the best practices for internet security first one is you have to use a strong passwords second one is back up your data properly third one do not share your personal information with any others fourth one you have to use always secure transactions fifth one you have to install firewalls in your system sixth one never install software from unknown sources seventh one clear browser cookies frequent frequently and eighth one use anti virus and anti spyware software always here comes the question what is a virus virus is a malicious program that attacks your computer system files spyware malware adware worms trojan horses spam are common threats antivirus software is a program that detect and protect us from malicious programs such as viruses 
and antivirus software performs following functions. It scans every file on the computer. It scans all drives and outside pen drive or CD on your computer. It scans incoming emails from attached virus. It may detect spywares on your computer. These all were some of the basic functionalities of antivirus softwares. And dear students, these all were some of the very basics of web application. I hope you understand everything clearly. Nowadays, web applications and web, web programming plays a vital role in everyone's life. So it is very important to study. Hope you understand it clearly. Uh, have a nice day. Thank you all. Bye-bye.